your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the Today's Bible passage comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 through 13. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and a handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So the Samuel took 
the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on the spirit, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Ramah. Amen. Saul was the king of Israel, but he had disobeyed God. So God told Samuel to fill a horn with oil and go to Bethlehem. A man named Jesse lived there. God had chosen one of Jesse's sons to be Israel's next king. God said, visit Jesse and his sons. I will show you which one I have chosen. Samuel went to Bethlehem and met with Jesse and his sons. Jesse's oldest son was tall and handsome. When Samuel saw him, he thought, this must be the one God chose to be king. But God told Samuel, he's not the one. Do not pay attention to what he looks like. You look at what you can see on the outside, but I see the heart. Jesse brought out his next son to Samuel, but Samuel said the Lord hasn't chosen him either. One by one, Jesse's sons approached Samuel. Each time, Samuel said the Lord hasn't chosen him either. Do you have any more sons? Samuel asked. Yes, Jesse said. My youngest son, David, is in the field taking care of the sheep. Jesse sent for David. When David arrived, God told Samuel, he's the one. Samuel anointed David. He poured oil on David's head to show God had chosen him to be the king. The spirit of the Lord was with David and Samuel went back home. Now, King Saul was bothered by an evil spirit. Saul's servants thought Saul might feel better if he listened to beautiful music. One of Saul's officials knew that Jesse's son David could play the lyre. So David came to Saul, and whenever Saul felt troubled, David played his lyre, and Saul felt better. Samuel anointed David, setting him apart to be the next king. God's choice for Israel's king was surprising. David was the youngest in his family, but God saw David's heart for the Lord. When Jesus came to earth, he seemed like a surprising choice for a king. Jesus is the perfect king who saves us from our sin and reigns forever. Boys and girls, let's do an activity to make ourselves ready for today's sermon. For those of you who are at home watching the online sermon, you can also do this at home. All you have to do is when you hear the statement that applies to you, you are to get up and run around the circle one time, maybe around your living room, and then sit down. All right, so here are some of the uh, statements. All right, all the kids who are wearing red shirts, you can now stand up and run around the room. What about the kids who have brothers? Kids who have traveled out of state? and kids who have a pet. All right, so we did this little activity. Now you can all sit down and listen to today's story. The Spirit of God left King Saul and God's heart left Saul as well. The prophet Samuel was in grief. He was really sad, but God encouraged Samuel to pack his horn with oil and go to the house of Jesse. What was God's plan? Well, I bet most of us have heard the name King David. He was a shepherd boy who became the king of Judah after Saul. God's choice of David was special and he was anointed by God to be the king. However, the anointed boy had to wait many, many years in humbleness before he set his foot on the throne. David was not only the king of Israel, but was a writer and a music musician. The book of Psalms is a collection of poems and songs that were mostly written by David all throughout his life. One of the well-known Psalms is Psalm 23. I'm going to read it. I want you guys to meditate and really listen to the song. You, Lord, are my shepherd. I will never be in need. You led me in rest in fields of green grass. You lead me to streams of peaceful water, and you refresh my life. David wrote a poem when he was a shepherd. He had a good understanding of the life of a shepherd. Before he, he came on the kingship, David was a shepherd who tended the sheep. Boys and girls, did you know that you actually need lots of skills to be a shepherd? Well, first, 
You must be tough at heart. Shepherding is about making life and death decisions that will tear your heart apart. And number two, you must be willing to do hard work, physical labor of moving fences, moving sheep, and handling 40 pounds baits of hail. And number three, must be willing to be humbled daily. Uh, there will be days when you make the wrong decision, when you overlook the obvious, when the not so obvious will attack and leave you on your knees. It makes you humble every day. And number four, you must be not be afraid to learn new things. And number five, you must have great endurance. Shepherds must be willing to work in all uh, adverse weather conditions, rain, sleet, uh, snow, sub-zero uh, degree temperatures, extreme heat, and humidity. And they must be able and keep sheep alive. And number six, you must exhibit the ability to observe, you know, getting to know your sheep. And number seven, you must have the patience. We can definitely assume that David always woke up early in the morning, went to the field to check on his sheep, made sure no sheep were lost or heard during the night, carried the hay, uh, fed the sheep, led the sheep to the pasture for hours and hours and brought them safely home. In between his tasks, uh, David had many hours. I mean, he had no human friends to talk to or chat with. David had sheep. He observed each and every sheep. But more than anything, David had God as his friend. He wrote a song, played his lyre, and worshipped God. He talked to God in prayers and worship. When his older brothers were out in the battle fighting for Israel, David was alone on the other side of the field, tending sheep and nobody paid attention to a shepherd boy. When Samuel arrived at the house of Jesse, Samuel asked the father and the sons to consecrate the sacrifice together, which means to give the sacrifice to God. And Samuel observed each son of Jesse. And do you know who stood out to Samuel? Yes, the first son, uh, his name was Elab, for he was built and handsome just like Saul. But God awoke Samuel with the message, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Samuel then slowly observed the second son, but it wasn't him either. The third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh, and they weren't God's chosen king. But Jesse had the youngest son who was out in the field tending the sheep. As a young David running towards the house, the voice of God spoke to Samuel, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. The Spirit of God rushed upon David from the day onward. David was anointed with the oil of God and set apart to be the king in the midst of his brothers. Yet unlike Saul, David didn't become a king right after his anointment. Saul went to a battle and brought victory to Israel, which confirmed his kingship. Do you guys remember that after he won the battle, uh, Samuel took him to Gilgal and made him the king? But David's journey of kingship was a bit different. Instead of a victorious life, David continued to live a humble life. David had to wait. We see in these verses 14 through 23, Saul, who often was captured by a harmful spirit, needed a servant who could comfort him with music. One of his servants mentioned David, who was skillful and liar. And David was called to play the lyre for his king, Saul, as he stayed at the palace. As David played the lyre, the harmful spirit departed from Saul. Which is very interesting, even though David was now anointed by God, God still made him wait and play music for King Saul. Even though David was the anointed one, God kept David to wait. And nobody knew David's anointing. Actually, it was a secret anointing and that he would be the next king of Israel. 
The journey of David from a shepherd boy to the anointed king was really, really long. Yes, we wonder why is God keeping Saul as a king? Why is God not putting David on the throne right after his anointment? On David's journey to the throne, he faces the biggest enemy, Goliath. Meets his best friend Jonathan and chases by a man, uh, the mad king Saul, and so on. It wasn't easy, but God made David wait. And we will see that on that journey, David will learn the goodness of God. His long wait uh, to the kingship will make David to realize that God is good. He is merciful and he is gracious and that he will never leave David alone. Let us all close our eyes and fold our hands. Uh, even though we have heard about David's story multiple times about David and Goliath and all these story, but now we're going to learn about his life in more depth. Why he got to, you know, write all these psalms, what was in his heart, and all the confessions that he made to the Lord. So, as we think about today's story, I want you guys to uh, really thank God for just providing us with even the book of Psalms to comfort us. And I want you guys to really meditate upon God's mercy and his grace, even though. Um, nobody paid attention to David. It was God who paid attention to his heart and his life. So let us close our eyes, fold our hands, and let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for teaching us about King David and his actually his life before his kingship. Um, he was a boy, a shepherd boy, who always followed his routine, um, went, on, went to the field, tended the sheep, and he was humbly made relationship with you, Father. And Lord, through David's life, Father, we are learning that, God, you are a great, great shepherd to us, that we are your sheep, that you always lead us to the green pasture to feed us, to make us drink fresh and living water, Father. And Lord, through David's life, this journey of a shepherd boy to the anointed king, as we are going to observe his life the next few weeks, Father, will you please teach us that we're not just learning and gaining about the knowledge or the characters in the Bible, but Lord, uh, help us to really apply the story of David into our lives, Father. And please transform our lives, Lord, and we want to continuously follow you, for you are our great shepherd. Thank you, Father, and we pray everything in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>